103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 26, 2021, and I'm Larry Rhodes, or Outer, sorry, Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I've been spending all morning looking for a disc golf get disc, and the only thing I have to show for it is a mosquito bite. Well, that's uh, positive, I guess. Our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Hello, Dread. Ahoy there. And George Brown, the second and a half. Uh, Boudreaux, hello, welcome. All the way from, you're from Canada too, aren't you? No. I'm England? Oh, I guess Canada. Canada. <laughs> yeah. And John Richards, the John Richards from England. The John Richards. Uh, welcome all. Hello. Hi. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, what are we doing, going to be talking about today? What's our topic? Me, 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 me. We're going to be talking, <laughs> talking about, about narcissism you? today. <laughs> talking about narcissism today. Uh, okay. But before we get into it, or narcissistic disorder, uh, George will be introducing the topic. But before we get into it, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks for our weekly invocation. <clears throat> oh, hey there, then. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, El Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we put up with those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. We gotta have the hand signal. I think there's worthwhile to have the hand signal. What was it? What was it? It's this? Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna be talking about narcissism today. I uh, I know it's a topic George has been really excited about. So George, would you like to introduce the topic today? Yes, um, I, I guess, uh, give me about three minutes, okay? okay. Uh, I, uh, I got in, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, stumbled, I was bumbling around on the web one day and I stumbled upon a psychologist named George Simon. And George Simon is a rather interesting guy because when I think about the, uh, the locations where great psychologists would be, I think about Vienna, New York, L.A., Boston, Chicago, London, you know, places like that. George Simon hangs out in some place like Arkansas. He's a practicing Roman Catholic. He has written a patriotic song, which I think is awful. Um, I don't know what else to say about him except, uh, oh, yeah, people who I regard <clears throat> as practitioners of woo uh, like to interview him. <laughs> But he has a very interesting take upon uh, how the field of psychology has dealt with uh, people who are on a part of the psychological disorder spectrum called Cluster B, which includes narcissists, uh, and in other words, people with narcissistic personality disorder, people with borderline personality disorder, uh, people with antisocial personality disorder. And there is a fourth one that I keep forgetting that sort of goes in and out of my mind. But uh, these people are very interesting because um, regardless of how they got that way, they tend to make the rest of us miserable. That's what they have in common. George, I'm going to have to ask the question just just to play my own George card. What is narcissism? What are you talking about? Well, okay, I'll tell, let me first start by saying what narcissism kind of is and isn't. I love it's it. okay. Uh, we have the legend of narcissists, you know, the guy who was looking at his own reflection in the water, digging himself. Well, that's only a tiny piece of it. 
Um, what we find, the characteristics of narcissists that I jotted down this morning are grandiosity, need for recognition and admiration, disdain and lack of empathy for other people, a sense of personal superiority. This is a person who establishes abusive power and control over others. He has a fragile ego. He's intolerant of criticism, belittles other people. Mm. And I want to add the word seductive. Ooh. Now, okay. narcissists, um, according to people who know more than I do, they tend to be more male than female. Uh, borderline personality disorder tend to be more female than male. But there's a lot of crossover in all of these. And there are crossovers between the characteristics. And I'm not going to say any more about that because I could go on for the whole hour of the show and I won't. <laughs> you guys need to talk too. So these, anyway, these are the characteristics of, uh, that I jotted down this morning of, of narcissists. And um, one of the, see, see what Simon, George Simon, the psychologist identified as a, a problem that psychologists have had in the, in the psychology community of how they've dealt with narcissists. So the narcissist dictator walks into the psychologist's office and he says, Doc, I was going to kill 30,000 people today, but I only killed 25,000. Hey, you got to help me. I'm off my game. And the psychologist says, that's good. I can help you with that. Now let's talk about your childhood. And off they go. And what Simon is saying, hey, look, these guys are ruining the world for the rest of us. We got to look at that. And that's where I came in. Okay. So um, the people who I've been listening to a lot are George Simon, uh, a woman named Romani. Darvasala and Sam Vakden, who is a narcissist himself. These are all psychologists and they're on YouTube. And um, let me recommend them to you guys for he open. Himself he, as a a narcissist. Narcissist. he did, yes. He says, I know it from the inside. I know this disorder because I am one. So could you say the name of the disorder one more time? Disorder one more time. It's called narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder. So I, let me end by just saying some of the people who who exemplify all this. I think. Okay. Oh, well, this is all filtered. Names. Yeah, this is all filtered through me, and I am not an expert. Okay, but maybe Attila the Hun, Alexander the Great. I'm forgetting. Who am I forgetting? What was his Napoleon? Name? No. Oh, I forgot about Napoleon. Great, Hitler. Dread Pirate. Hitler, of course. Now, who are the narcissists of today, the big time guys? Okay. Trump. Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil. Uh, a fellow in the U.S. who shall be nameless for the oh, moment. I already named him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Victor Orban in Hungary. Rodrigo Duterte in the Philippines. Alexander Lukashenko in Belarus. And we've got a newcomer, Nayib Bukele in El Salvador. And The Guardian did a, a feature on him just today. Check him out, guys. How about Putin? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know about Putin. Putin. You don't know about Putin? Well, I don't know about Putin as a narcissist because his personality to me is veiled. You know, I, I don't know enough about him. I can't help from the actions. How about I'd say it's at least in line with actions. Yeah. I may not know. I may not have ever had a beer with him, but I can tell from like <clears throat> the amount of obstacles I'd have to jump over just to have a beer with him. The guys, probably. Well, yeah. I mean, he's he's certainly intolerant of opposition. There you, you go. know that. Yeah. 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 So well, I would but, like but to throw I... this out to Dread Pirate. Uh, Dread Pirate, what was your thoughts? Well, I was just going to. Uh, uh, George indicated that uh, more men than women are narcissistic and I, i've got a stat here uh 75 uh 0.05 of the general population in the u.s are afflicted with up to 75 percent of those 
being men. So it's heavily hmm. uh, weighted towards men. Do you say 75%? 75% of those 0.5% got it. Who are, or who are afflicted in the general population. So, okay. George, look like you had something on your mind. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine who has worked in the field of um, executive placements. So he a very high echelon of, um, of HR. And he pointed out, he said, he said, not all narcissists are destructive. And he named Bill Gates. And uh, who's that guy at Apple? Um, Who's that Steve guy Jobs. at Apple? Oh, Steve yeah. Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve, Steve Jobs, you know, mm -hmm. as, as narcissists. And he, he felt that they contributed something good George, to the I would, world. Let's see, let's see what other people have on this. Yes, absolutely, drew, absolutely. Do you know narcissists? What are you, what's your opinion on narcissists? How would you, would you define it the same way? Yeah, yeah I guess I'd, I'd define it the same way. And um, <clears throat> growing up, I remember my brother and I tended to really – look at people uh and, and kind of grade them on a conceited scale oh I think, I think that kind of ties in nice i remember uh, growing up to me like the most unbecoming thing of a of a of a friend um you know teenager age or whatever was someone who's conceited yeah and i think that ties into the, at least that, that was kind of the lens i viewed narcissism through so i i tried really hard to not you know, to be humble and, and to not brag. And, and I think to, to George's point about the good narcissists, I think there, you know, there, there's a limit to it. Cause I think if you, um, as I progressed in, in math and engineering and, and such, I realized there's, there's, there's an advantage to having confidence and, and being proud of, of your, your skills. So there's, there's a nice balance there. You gotta, you gotta be humble, but confident. And uh, yeah, that, it's it probably a, a slippery slope if you if you you uh, gain um, recognition for doing well and and you just kind of go down that road of narcissism. Maybe maybe there's a path there. I don't know. Now I'm interested about this conceited skill. Did it work on a one to seven as well? Like was it just <laughs> as annoying as non decimal uh, other skills uh, that you love so much? I, you know, I, 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 we, we haven't argued about this yet, but, but one to six is a much better scale than one to 10 because you look at our clock and it, it breaks a lot more. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No, we never really broke it down to a number. It was really more binary. I think it was like that person's conceded. That person wow. isn't, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I did have a similar scale called holes and hills where I would consider oh. people are either a hole or a hill. And it's like, if I have love and I throw it at a person and they're a hill, that love will go to the top of the hill and roll back down and I'll get some love back. So it's like, I give and I get back. And that's really good to know that there are people who you can throw some love at and it'll always come back. But then there are people who are holes where you throw it in and it's gone. And it's like the time you invest in them, the money you might give them, the help you might give them, it's just into a hole, they have it. And it's like, at a certain point, you have to value the love that you can offer. I like that. You may not That's get a good back. analogy. Yeah. So, so it's an opportunity for a bit of racism here. Oh. Other social <laughs> black holes. <laughs> opportunity for racism. Phrase that way. Hold on. I'm sorry. I was laughing through the sentence. What, what, what were you saying? Go for it. Are there such things as black holes? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dread Pirate, what do you have? Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I call people like that the holes. I call them uh, emotional vampires. Yeah. Because they, they tend just to suck your energy and uh, drain you. Um, yep. I, I recently uh, essentially wrote off a friendship I had had for years. Uh, with a narcissist just because he had just taken it one step too far and it, it actually cost me a job. Wow. And uh, yeah. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I had mentioned this before that I, I was a president president for a community foundation and then, uh, you know, stepped down to actually be the uh, administrative assistant. And he was on that board. Um, he had joined a couple years ago and um yeah man he just uh put some pretty serious criticism to me and and uh i was uh relieved of my duties and wow uh, it was, it, yeah it was because of him and i found out and i essentially said uh, this is where you can take yourself and bye-bye mm. so. yeah you know well john i what, think what, 
Yeah, I think what, what we've established is that narcissists prioritize number one. Yeah. And taking it right back to Narcissus, who looked at himself in the puddle, I think there's a technological implication here, because what we've done with this is we've given people opportunities not just to look at themselves, but to yes. snap it, <laughs> keep yes. it, save it for posterity. We've so the selfie has enabled narcissists to out themselves. And going on that, I suspect there's a majority of them that are female. Okay, I got, that's, you have so many good points there. I would say like, one, yep. technology does enable narcissists to be more narcissistic. It does seem to enable that. There are people who definitely don't like technology, but I definitely think that if you're a narcissist and you have access to the internet, you have all the tools you need to fall into your own echo chamber, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a back facing camera. And a back facing right. camera. Mm -hmm. And I do think that there are female narcissists that we don't give as much attention to, though I don't want to go around pointing out disorders in other people. I don't want to start that habit. Uh, Larry, what do you think about the topic so far? Narcissists, do you think they exist? <laughs> what do you think about oh, the definition? Uh, do you have examples? Yes, definitely. I mean, you can't spend the last four years in America without learning that word and knowing what it means. <clears throat> but uh, I, if it's, there are conservatives or GOP people listening to this can this podcast and may think that it's not uh trump is not a narcissist uh well i have married trump who is a clinical psychologist and she wrote a book about her uncle wow uh, oh yeah the president trump called too much Former president never trump. enough too, too much, much and never enough, enough. Yeah. right and she called him a uh uh pristine case or uh, um, uh, poster boy basically for uh, narcissist syndrome i think if so. you build a giant black obelisk in the middle of new york with your name in it in gold and then <laughs> <laughs> this is my headquarters it's like oh my gosh it's like almost prototypical yeah. megal megalomaniac or megal yeah. megalomaniac yeah evil but again i mean James you could Bond do that movie. You could do that, but still help people like, uh, the, what's it, Bill Gates and uh, who else that you mentioned a minute ago? But no, if you're, um, if you're a, a black hole or a, if you're a hole and all you do is just take and never yeah. give, yeah. Um, that's, that's the problem. I mean, so I want to touch on something that I think George said, and I think it's very important because we obviously don't like jerks when we don't like interacting with holes, yet... We, enough of us liked it so much that we elected one as president for four years. Right. So there is a seductive quality behind narcissists that they, yeah. they elude and evoke. Why is that? Where does it come from? And why do we feel generally feel attracted to people who are narcissists? Well, uh, Larry, yes. what's up? I think a lot of us, I mean, in a lot of the cases in America, we're, we're building a, um, a nation of narcissists. Um, I was watch. I was reading online this morning on Facebook, or where a guy says he posted. He says, "Why do so many people like Trump and vote for him?" Hmm. And one of the persons who responded says, "Well, he says what we're thinking." So I mean, you would have to think that they have to agree with his points, or they wouldn't put him in office. They wouldn't vote for him. They, I hear they that. must and be thinking me. a lot like him. I, here's me, and it terrifies me because I don't think. I never thought a single thing that guy said. And so I'm just wondering, like, right. there must be people who have pent up thoughts that they feel like maybe they can't say that here's a guy who's saying them very loudly. And they're like, mm -hmm. finally, the guy yeah. who my inhibitions are telling me not to say these things out loud for the betterment of society. I want to hire that guy as the leader in charge of everybody. It's like, that guy has no inhibitions. That's going to be a terrible situation. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing yeah. a better job than this guy already. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, one, one possible explanation might be that because their main concern is themselves, they tend to be successful, conspicuously successful. Mm. And that can be seen to be admirable by the rest of us. There you go. Well, you know, what's funny is he's not that successful. Uh, he oh, was he was born into a family of millionaires and given a huge stake uh, when he was young to play with, mm -hmm. but he's he's lost business after business and gone bankrupt after bankrupt. Uh, 
you know, for the entire history of his business uh, career. So compared to he other managers, he manages to spin it though, doesn't he? As so yes. it's, it's, oh yeah, certainly. Yeah. And I think that's really what it is. I, I think people don't care about the, the the books that he keeps. They care more about the the cover, and for the cover or the on lifestyle front, that he that is a, he that is a, that is a very sad truth, isn't it? Yeah. We will will more of us will vote for the the uh, the reality TV star than than the than the bloke who knows what he's up to. Yeah. Well. But anyway, have, having lowered the standard of this show by exhibiting racism, I um. What? I, no, that's not racism. I, that's a good joke. We can have a long I, discussion. Yeah. Well, I I, well, I, I, I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss the opportunity to do a bit of sexism too. Okay. So I'd like, <laughs> I'd, like <laughs> I'd like to speculate whether there's such a thing as female holes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going there. <laughs> slightly, going, slightly going out of the gutter this time. We're yeah. gonna. I want to talk about seductiveness. And I think what I think we might touch on something, Eric. Let me know if I'm on the right track. I feel like we may not be. I think in America, it's very easy to be self-conscious because we do nothing but laud successful people, people who have, you know, uh, merited awards or some sort of authority. That's the only people on TV, the sports stars, the gold medalists. We don't care about second place. We only focus on A's, the 4.0 GPAs, the best colleges. And when you're born, you're raised in a society where excellence is in is the standard and anything else is forgotten about mm -hmm. and so that mm -hmm. can lead to a lot of self-consciousness and so what you look for are people that you can I, look up to are idolatry or role models and it tends to be that people will pick just successful people without necessarily picking kind people or empathetic people they'll yeah. be like hey i like the michael jordan right. mm -hmm. without realizing michael jordan is kind of a crazy dude who's like a extreme gambler and ultra competitive but that's what got him to the number one spot in the nba but it's also mm -hmm. a terrible human being kind of aspect eric i would like to see does that does that track or do you think i'm thinking a little too narcissistically or or uh, <laughs> uh nihilistically probably would probably be a better phrase no i think it tracks um and uh yeah, we reward, you know, we reward people with those qualities. And you're right. Like, we don't have a metric for goodness, uh, empathy. Yeah. Um, mm, it's true. There's no George's, good award. Yeah. May I, may I speak? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, the couple of things I forgot to mention um, that aren't on the list, but I, I think we need to think about. One is some is a, is a phenomenon called narcissistic rage, Ooh. and the other one is a, a something we've definitely seen out of our fearless leader, which is the motivation of revenge. I mean, this is a vengeful person. Oh. Yeah, and. Um, the the con, you know the 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 mind control over other people it fascinates me too and the abuse that they withstand from these people so it's like i look at who in the world would want to work for donald trump and yet they they get in line to do it you know they want to do it they must know that he's going to toss them to the curb it's just a matter of when mm. I, why do they do it I don't know. The self-destructive behavior, why are people self-destructive? Dread, what's up? Uh, well, I would like uh, to suggest that uh, certainly the God of the Bible is the biggest narcissist of, of, of all. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, these, yeah. it's, it's not, it's, it probably isn't really surprising that people like Trump uh, do get a following because um, they're lured by their uh, uh, subsistence on uh, the greatest narcissist of all. So, right. And mm -hmm. I the think that's a great room. point. It's a great, it's a great point, Dred, because if you do look at the Bible, like even the 10 commandments are basically, I'm the number one person. Don't mm -hmm. bang my wife. Uh, don't <laughs> think about banging my wife. 
<laughs> I'm cool. I'm not only am I awesome, <laughs> but you can't use anything about me that's not awesome because I'm awesome. All right, now let's go into the main rules. I did the first four. All right, uh, don't steal. Yada 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 yada. Don't bang my wife. It's in the Bible twice. Yeah. It's and it's, and it's, and two and <laughs> commandments are. It is. Don't yeah. yeah. Don't bang my wife and don't think about banging my wife. There are two right, separate yeah. commandments in in the Ten Commandments about leaving people's wives alone and, and then it's like uh, i don't even know i don't even know how to describe it it's not even don't bang my husband it's like who cares what women think it's more like just don't bang my wife right you know i'm talking to the people that matter the straight white males or the straight hebrew males or whatever we want to call it all right guys i think we're at the bottom of the half hour worship me i was just gonna say worship me yeah before we go to the break that in Islam, you can't even draw. It, there's a commandment: don't draw a picture of me. <laughs> well, that's that would be blasphemy. That's, that's be, Muhammad. Yeah, that would be the example of blasphemy, at least for uh, yeah. God's yeah. figure. He's just taking yeah. more to an extreme, I guess. But yeah, yeah, that's the prophet. Okay, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, September 26th, 2021. Uh, let's talk for a minute about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, but we are again meeting in person at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City out on the patio every Tuesday evening between like 5.30 and 8. So after work on Tuesdays, come down to Barley's and meet other atheists. Uh, you can find us online and Facebook, meetup.com or at knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist for that matter. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? We're talking about how uh, John's kids are pronouncing it water now <clears throat> and, and what he does in those kinds of situations. I thought it was really great. So what do you do when, you're, when, when your kids are like, hey, I want a bottle of water, Dad? I, I would like a bottle of water, please, Father. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a tea in that. Yes. Yes. Don't don't. You've been watching too many YouTube videos made by Americans. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Subscribe to more English people, mm. like this one. Yeah. Yes. Right. Or mine. Come to that. Hey, there you go. There you go. Plug. Anyway, we're talking plug, about plug, plug. Today, right, George. Throwing out the topic to you. We don't like narcissists, but yet they exist. Why? What's up with that? Well, narcissistic personality disorder, of course, um, has its origins in brutal mistreatment of the practitioner in childhood. Hmm. So he's been traumatized by somebody in his family. And in the case of Donald Trump, we, we or she, yes, absolutely. Um, I don't have examples of female narcissists. That Martha I have Stewart, found. though, I don't want to start throwing out diagnoses on people I've never met or stuff like that. But I can say there's definitely examples. And yes. is it always a childhood trauma or is it could just be a complete lack of... I think it is. I think the psychologists say, you know, that, that, that there is. And, um, you know, in the case of Trump, I know that, um, I mean, they've been talking about his father, uh, Fred, being abusive to him as a child. And that he, I'm, I'm going to put this out there, this is my own, that he, his mother was very weak. He got no protection from his mother against his father, because I think his mother was equally abused by Fred. Well, he also, according to Mary Trump's book, uh, Trump, uh, Donald Trump had an older brother, I can't remember his name, but he was the one who was supposed to be groomed for success, but he never could measure up to Fred's um, standard of success, and uh, Fred eventually ground him down to the point where he committed suicide. 
It's a, it's a hell of a book. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Well, hmm. let me throw this out. I think there might even be an evolutionary uh, uh, desire for or preference for narcissists <laughs> over over otherwise. <laughs> I have a kind of a. I'm going to be very careful with my description of this, at least as far as like even radio goes. But um, when you make a baby, right? You don't just have one spermosa traveling and just like, I'm going to make a baby. And he has a little briefcase and a little hat and he's just looking for the egg. You got thousands and thousands and thousands of cells all traveling, all competing against each other. And only one of them is going to fertilize that egg. Only one of them is going to actually make a zygote. And that one can't be nice to all the other ones. That one has to think, hey, I may not be the fastest, I may not be the smartest, I may not be the most successful, but I'm gonna win. And I, I'll do it if I have to jump over this person, I'll do it if I gotta smack my tail into this guy. I'm gonna be the one. And that's the one that becomes us. And every single person on this call and every single person on this planet is the result of that one sperm being like, Nobody else matters except for me. <laughs> and yeah. That's how we got I, here. I think I, that's, I think that's a pretty big case of anthropomorphization. <laughs> it's true. true. <laughs> we are the result of that. We are the result of that. Like it's not like it's a legal I logic. It's like I would hate to that. think my sperm thinks. We are there. Exactly. We are literally yeah. there. You are the sperm <laughs> that was like, screw everybody else. I'm here first. Yeah. And if that's yeah. the society that, like, if that's the, if, if that is the result of how we come about, like, if that's the programmed that, uh, nature of like how we come about, it could explain a lot of things about just yeah. like, well, uh, we only care about number one. I, I think Richard Dawkins might have something to say about that. Yes. Hey, yeah. I, well, I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the gametes are like the inter intergeneration between the somatic organisms. And I, I don't think that they have the sort of intellectual capability. Well, and here's the alternative. Here's the alternative. Alternative. here's the alternative. Because right? you, you can just as easily build a model in evolution where cells are collaboratively working together towards getting what the best cell traveling its genetic information to an egg. And we do have examples of cells that do co uh, cooperate and many other functionalities to maintain homeostasis in life as we know it. But it's only when sex is involved that it's everyone for themselves. This is the path that works. Evolutionarily, we don't have to change it because the ones that have don't succeed in nature. It's only mm -hmm. the ones that have this giant competition where the weaker, slower cells don't make it to the egg and the faster oh. ones do. And I think there's there's a really interesting facet, not maybe on an intellectual perspective, but on the idea of we don't have a collaborative system to get to the egg. It's just whatever gets there first, whatever is well, the best one gets it. And that's kind of like how we think about it in society. It's like, hey, we don't we don't offer 14 gold medals. We only offer one for the best, and we don't care really about the other. Who's the second person that landed on the moon? We kind of know. Third, we have no idea. First, we always know. We make uh, we'll, we'll name libraries after them. We'll we'll name book kids after them. But that's it. I think we do have a mentality that reflects that very consistently. Whether it's kind of ca causal, I, I can definitely say not the case. But correlation, absolutely. Dread, what do you think? Um, well, I, I just think there's a problem with ascribing agency or awareness uh, in in that context. Um, I don't I don't think it works that way. I would never argue that, but I'm clearly making a correlation that seems pretty self-evident, whether it's causal or not, because we don't have evidence to prove either way. I'm not saying I think what a sperm is, but I will say this. We have a society that cares, number one, clearly, and we have an evolutionary system that makes people that only cares about one person only. And we could just as easily have a society where it's like, hey, you know, this sperm system isn't working out so well. Why don't we try to figure out the the best kind of genes and the just genetics? It's like, no, no, now you're talking about uh, uh, programming people or eugenics and all these other more dangerous things. Well, let's just keep it as this system as it is. It's like, have we ever thought about like the system that actually makes people is very much like a lottery just based on like yes, yeah, the best, absolutely. It's the a best one, but even the best one <laughs> from, from looking at nature can lead to a lot of physical defects or narcissistic personality disorder or more inclinations <clears throat> to other kind of mental diseases. Yet we stick to a system that is like this. I think it's an interesting topic. Well, you, Let's you move past the agency to... thing and think about that. I think it's an interesting. Okay. Aspect. Well, yeah. You, yeah.
you don't have to attribute agency to sperms in order to get the scenario you've painted, because you can attribute the agency to the vehicle that provides the sperms, <laughs> the, the adult organism. And, and those that succeed uh, and therefore have the most opportunity to fertilize eggs are the ones that tread on the other's faces more. Is that the case? Well, it, it's not so much the case in the human species, but well, if you look at some of the other species, take lions, for example. I would say you could make a strong case that the chief lion, the head of the lion herd, is a narcissist, because not only does he gather himself a collection of females, but if he arrives at them and they're already pregnant, he, he kills their puppies. Hmm. Interesting. Probably. So that's, Larry, that's a well, biological strategy that works yeah. for lions. Not only lions, but um, pretty much all primate, um, you know, apes, chimpanzees, uh, bovines, or uh, in, in the wild, you get uh, dog groups, you know, the, the alpha male gets the, gets the women, gets the females, but they and don't they get to spread their sperm. And it's because they're aggressive. It's because they're, yeah. they provide, um, you know, they don't necessarily kill all Defense. the previous offspring, though. No, in fact, no, they don't. Not necessarily. In fact, many, many of them can be persuaded to foster mm -hmm. the offspring of others because there is this, uh, this sort of tribalism because mm -hmm. your, well, your, I mean, sperm, yeah. your, your genetics is closely yeah. related to those of your near sure. kin. So you want to help those out as well because they're a core to you. And well, think about all the children that uh, Genghis Khan is supposed to have. <laughs> you know, hundreds, probably, hundreds of children. We're all probably yeah. descendants. Wouldn't doubt it. Uh, you can speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Boudreaux, Boudreaux, Boudreaux. Yeah, so uh, kind of since we're going down this road, and I'm not sure where we are on being able to say the word on the radio or not, but there are, I, I understand there are primates that have spoon shaped. Uh, organs yep. <laughs> that actually scoop out other sperm <laughs> and put their yeah. own. In. I mean, yeah. there's yeah. a there's a narcissism that it, way beyond right uh, biological. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So here, yeah. and, 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 and there's that's a very interesting point because again, evolution isn't about agency, right? Like mm -hmm. there's sperm traveling through a canal or the shape of a genetic or genital. It's no agency behind it. It's just trial and error, and whatever's the most successful yeah. seems to work. But this it's one, yeah. not necessarily the best thing that works. It's just whatever worked at that time yeah. that dictates success. And it could even be to the detriment of a species because yeah. many times evolution will go to a place where it's just a dead end and that mm -hmm. whole species die out. But, mm -hmm. Dre, uh, Dre Pirate, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I just I think, uh, oh, when uh, when you when you were talking about sperm, it was almost like it was a race, and sperm <laughs> of course aren't competing with each other because they don't they're not aware of each other. So it's not like they're in a foot race trying to get to the finish line. It's they're a Sunday just... morning, and I know everyone's really excited. Like, <laughs> we just had black holes. So we let that go. <laughs> Yes, there let's, you. let's understand that there's a tone to the show that's very light. We don't yeah. have agency in evolution. We don't have agencies in cells. However, yeah. we do have correlations to how society seems mm -hmm. to dictate how it values success, where mm -hmm. it almost comes at no cost, <laughs> where it could come at the detriment of a species as a whole, where we could elect essentially a tyrant for four years and, and deal with that collectively as a group, yeah. consequences included. Why do we keep doing this? And I look at even evolution and it seems like we have it complicit in like almost this non-thinking process that has this system that is like, this isn't even the best system when we choose it or when we behave like it or even in nature, yet it still seems to exist. It seems like narcissism, even in, in both the agency and the non-agency sense, is almost well, ubiquitous. And I wish it, we would do something to try to like, fine tune it out of the out of our mm. you know, our dialogue and at least out of our beings uh, i'm going to go to george because yeah. he he had the question first well um for one thing i think that these these narcissists who are the leaders of countries have one thing in common so with this filter oh, who's oh, 
Go ahead, yeah. Uh, they have one thing in common, which is that they're, they're pretty effective entertainers. <laughs> they, they can, you know, they can grab our attention and hold it. That's a euphemism. Like a minister, you know, like a, like a, oh, yeah. like a Southern minister, you know. Yeah. And um, they like an audience. Yes, they, they, that's right. They want to be oh, admired. They like an audience. Yes. <clears throat> uh, John. Yeah, well, I was, I was still stuck on this evolutionary thing because yeah. pretty much any mode of life strategy that you could imagine exists in nature, including birds that can shut off their oviducts so that no further sperm can get in while still allowing further copulation with other mates. <laughs> and wow. spiders where the female, having had sex, then eats the male. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, black widows are good for that. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's any peculiarity you can imagine. Nature mm -hmm. has already thought of it. <laughs> yeah. And it's always experimenting. Is, yeah. It's sort of like the state of where nature is now is all these peculiarities. But like, think of all the ones that didn't work. That is like the, yes, like the dead that too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, there's really no plan in evolution. It's just doing what try, works best. And I see in evolution a system that may not necessarily be the best way for us to behave in a culture. And if evolution correlates to whatever's the most successful thing, we'll just try it. And it's, it, whatever, you know, if it fails, it fails. It's, good, it's, good. it's like maybe that's not the best way to dictate how we should treat people and how, how we put people in power. Maybe there should be more thought behind it. And maybe we can have more control other than just this very basic system. Dred, what do you think? Oh, I was just going to say, um, uh, when we're talking about the different uh, evolutionary strategies, uh, this time of year up here in Canada, in BC anyway, um, for the last two weeks, we've been dealing with a uh, massive number of aphids. And uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the life cycle of aphids, but of course I've done entomology for the last 20 years, so I know a little bit about it. And uh, aphids, for mm -hmm. most of their life, uh, clone themselves, so they're all females. And aphids are just these little soft-bodied insects that have these little prongs off the back end of them called cornicles. And clones grow like droplets of dew from these cornicles, and again, they're just reproducing clones of themselves for most Whoa. of their lifetime. Without what having happens, interactions with other aphids, they can do it like yeah, one it's, it's in called, the dark and make multiple. That's right. It's called parthenogenesis. Yeah. Um, and but in the fall, at the time that we're here now, uh, all the there's <clears> winged <throat> aphids. They're flying around, and that's when they're engaged in sexual reproduction. So for the for the great part of the year, they are just engaged in cloning and feeding you know feeding themselves, and then only at a certain period of time do they actually engage in sexual reproduction in order to mix the genes up a bit. I just yeah, say that for a point of interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It has nothing to do with uh -huh. narcissism. Okay. How about no, this? No, but it, it, it does have something to do with virgin birth, though. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and it's important to notice that uh, although mm -hmm. cloning has been discovered very recently to occur occasionally in fish, mm. it's never been observed in mammals. And even if it did happen, the offspring would have to be a girl. Okay. So, well, no, that makes I... sense, of course. Yeah. What I will suggest is um, it touches on what Eric was or Boudreaux was alluding to earlier that we have measures and awards for success, but near, nearly as many for empathy or for being good. And I think there's more that we can add to our criteria when it comes to determining leaders than just how successful you are or how much do you know or how much can you convince people that you know so that we can actually have more uh, uh, like a better metocracy, meta was it? What's what I'm looking for? Meritocracy, 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 meritocracy. 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 Uh, uh, a standard, a higher standard of meritocracy, right? Oh. Than just hey, this yeah. guy had a rich dad and now he's running for president. Let's run, let's elect this guy because he's only one of the two options that we got. Like, that's crazy, George. Oh. What do you got? Well, I think that um, media has caused a big change in um. Um, focus. I don't have a word for what I want to describe, so give me a moment here. Um, before 
we had phonograph records. We, we didn't have radio. We, ha we didn't have phonograph records. We had a whole bunch of musicians who worked in little towns all around the world. And then the phonograph record came in and people stopped making their own music a lot and started playing records. It caused the beginning of a star system where mm -hmm. one person is the star and everybody else is simply out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. which I think radio and television have have intensified this phenomenon and the internet has just made an explosion of it although it has also permitted people to come in from the sides more easily yeah well there was also the movies of course that had a big uh, I forgot that yeah on the star system but also the discotheque because uh, many years ago I was in a band and we got booked to play around about until discos became popular and of course they're much cheaper and the quality of yes. the music is even better so what all I, the bands are. i don't know what a discotheque is can someone keep me updated in the conversation what a is dj it? so like a dj it's the nightclub where instead of having a live band you have one person who plays Playing records records oh. yes and he's put all these musicians oh. to work okay. yes a disc yes. it's like a place you go that has a jukebox basically no, that's oh, right. No, it's a person. A, yeah, a person. Being a you box. There's an art to it, right? I mean, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're choosing what song to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, okay. It's a jukebox with an agent. <laughs> it's a jukebox. Yeah. It's basically a sperm, is what we're saying. Okay, great. No, I got it. <laughs> Guys. Uh, Can you speak up, Ty? Ah, yeah, you, I'm you, trying yeah. to. My mic's saying it. I'm just going to say, hey, we're probably near the end of the show. Uh, we may want to start winding up right about now. Boudreaux, it's been a while since we've seen you. What have you been up to and what should we, should we check out before the week's over? Uh, well, um, I, I haven't mentioned Sam Harris the whole show. So uh, I, uh, Ricky Gervais and Sam Harris do have season yes. two of Absolutely Mental. Yeah, Absolutely it's, Mental. Good stuff. It is hilarious. It's it so is. Good. It's so enjoyable. <laughs> Um, yeah. There's something about the comedian Ricky Gervais that brings out another side of, of Sam that you don't use get to hear. Absolutely. Like the entertaining uh, side. Yeah. I, it, well, it's the, light, the light side. The light yeah, side you joke, you joke a lot of times, Ty, but yeah, Sam Harris is always pretty serious. <laughs> He's he really very is. serious, yeah. But you, you see him with Ricky and it's just like <laughs> you hear him swear more and yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's the but, it, it is. It's really good stuff. They're a good yeah. pair. Can I'll you leave you guys... Put the link in. I'll, I'll put the link in. Yeah, I'll leave you guys with the uh, a, a comment of irony in that we're talking about narcissism, and at the end of this show, we're invariably going to tell everybody about where you can see more of us it's on video sad. in YouTube, and <laughs> click here and and subscribe and like, and uh, aren't we kind of narcissists too? Whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> there is that. Yes. The fine line. Yeah, I would say I, I consider narcissism sort of like salt. It's like everybody needs a little bit of salt, but once you add too much, you ruin the whole pot. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with like humor or in my head, I'd even go as far as saying racism. It's good to be able to laugh at racist jokes. It's not good to be able to be the one that's only making only racist jokes. Like, oh, it's that one guy who only <laughs> makes racist jokes. That's, he's too salty. We gotta, but I want to be able to appreciate like good comedy. So like, give me a little bit of dash. Just give me a little bit. That's all I'm asking for. And so I find like a lot of things in proportion are okay because they help society foster. But mm -hmm. and I don't want to be an absolutist on either either side. I want to at least be open to it. Everything uh, in moderation. So in that mm -hmm. respect, check me out. I'm Let's Chat. I'm on YouTube. You can find me. Hit that subscribe button. If you want to, if you don't want to, it's all good. It's all great. I got a job myself. <laughs> I got a day <laughs> job. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see. John Richards, where can we find your stuff at? At Free Thought Productions. Right. And not only do I do the mm. weekly Global Atheist News, which is a review of how religion impacts humanity over the previous seven days, but I also do Free Thought Ally, in which I interview a guest, and some of you guys have very kindly been my guests. Uh, but last night I had a fantastic guest, a young ex-Muslim, young girl who's a Pakistani Brit, and has, she's campaigning for human rights and female rights because, of course, Islam is probably the most misogynistic of the religions, and she's escaped from it, which is very brave. Mm. So come and take a look at Free Thought Hour with Nuria Khan. And she has her own channel called um, Holy Humanist. So I'd like to promote that as well. 
Very cool. Very cool. Let's see. We'll throw it up to our own. George, wait, George Brown, you have a closing joke. I'm going to save it for you. I'm going to save it for oh, you. Oh, no, no. I can't say the word. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't say the word. It's going not to kill on the FM, huh? <laughs> All right, all right. No, not on FM. <laughs> um, well, uh, I want to throw out just for a moment that um, sure. I've been looking at the the effects of of a uh, cluster B personality disordered people in my own life and the effects that they've had on me. And I want to throw that out to the rest of you as, uh, as a suggestion to, to take a look and see have you been affected by people like this? And um, what are we going to do to take the world back from people like this? Because I think we are, we are at the verge of losing the whole planet. And, uh, it's time to take control, you know. How are we going to do it? Good questions to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Dredd, where yeah. can we find your stuff at? Well, I'm uh, live streaming this right now, uh, Sunday morning, uh, starting at 8 a.m. And uh, you can find me on my uh, YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Nice. And uh, we've, got, uh, we've got three people on, Scott Kaler, hello, Loma. Hello. Hey, Loma. And uh, Dada's Trading Room, he's in there all right. Um, and I just wanted to uh, plug a book um, that I'm, I'm reading. It's called Religion Explained by Pascal Boyer. And uh, I wanted to just put a quote in there. If religion allays anxiety, it cures only a small part of the disease it creates. So uh, that's, that's my latest book. Yeah. Um, that rings very, true. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. And let's see. Did we get everybody? Yeah, that's everybody. Okay. That's the end of the show. Wait, no. Larry. <laughs> Where were we going, Larry? <laughs> Larry, what's well, going on? Where are we all going, Larry? <laughs> well, according to all the religions of the world, everybody is going to some other religion's hell. So there's that. Remember, <laughs> this show is available on Apple iTunes, Pod. Pocket Casts, uh, Amazon, and Podcasts Everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, my own content is found on digitalfreethought.com. There's my book. Thank you, uh, Dread Pirate. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button when you do go to digitalfreethought.com uh, for our radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Um, the book I uh, mentioned is uh, Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. You can send questions to the show by sending them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Like I said, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> That's the whole show. All right. I just want to throw out, you guys are all hills to me. So thank you. So much. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, you, you too. Hills. 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 Yeah. hills. Not holes. Not holes. Not holes. <laughs> George, now that we're off the air, do you want to do the joke? Do you want to do the joke? Anyway? Yeah, do the joke because I'm streaming it and, and it's yeah, okay to, to have it'll it on be my YouTube right. channel. It'll yeah. be Canada. Yeah. Uh, I want to share with you an old Yiddish proverb. When the penis rises, the brain flies out the window. <laughs> uh, okay. Sounds right. Yeah, definitely not great radio, but yeah, that was great. That was great. That was great. Uh, yeah. John, great humor throughout the show. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yes. yes. Hey, I'm where is our? That where is our idea. That's a great one. Where is our guy from uh, from Buffalo, New York? Uh, he, uh, I think he tends to forget it's it's on. Sometimes I'll text him and, and remind him. Actually, I think my wife and kids went to his house to go play outside. Oh. So, yeah. Eric, that's the cleanest I've ever seen your den. By the way, that that is like oh, really yeah. clean. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I do have a narcissism joke I could throw out there. That's yes, like please go, go for it. So yeah. I, yesterday, I, I knew I was going to have a crappy day because I woke up with a hard on, tripped over the rug, and then pulled over out the window. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Credits okay. well, I, I used I have a confession to make. Doctor. I used to be conceited, but now I'm perfect. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Man, I should have looked up some narcissism. <laughs> yeah, really. I, feel yeah. Like, <clears throat> I gotta start looking things up. These are good ones. All right. All right. Have a good week, guys. Yeah, thanks everybody. You too. See you everyone. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye.